somebody say, pray for me. Pray for me. me. This is something God has just laid on my heart. I want to be this as the end times approaches the attacks on church and church people and Christians are just going to get heavier and heavier. More people are going to be attacked and the enemy is targeting the church to stop the word of God from going forth so that people will just die out of humanity and become bots and robots and cyborgs and all the stuff I've been telling y'all. That's what they're doing. They want to take our feeling away. They want to take our experience with God away, our emotional experience with God, our spiritual experience, our ability to even connect with God spiritually. They want to remove that from us. And so they've targeted the church, and that's why there's so much drama in the church right now. The church is being targeted. So how do we handle this? Well, we learned last week we don't fight back. We don't handle it. We don't put up our dukes. Amen. Amen. You you save, you don't be duking it out. Don't be, amen, don't pull over on the freeway and get out of, and just go to duking. <laughs> we don't fight it out. We handle it in prayer. Prayer can do something that your fist can't. Amen. Prayer can do something that your fist can't. Prayer can win. You might lose. So we're going to handle it in prayer, but we learn prayer. We got to learn how to pray, and we have to especially learn how to pray for others. Amen. And we're going to do a little exercise at the end of this message, but I want to give you this first. It's not long at all, but this is just what we need to do and who we need to be as believers. We as a people are very quick to pass judgment on others when they fail, but slow to pray for them. Amen. That's inherent of the curse of Canaan going back to Ham, where Ham, instead of covering his father, protecting his father's legacy. And the thing people don't realize This man just spent a hundred years building an ark to save all the animals and mankind. All that time. And then here comes his son disregarding the fact that this man saved his life. He could have drowned in the flood. This man didn't just save everything else, but he saved his life. And yet he caught him in a moment of weakness. And instead of protecting him, helping him, he ridiculed him and mocked him. The Bible said he went out and told his brothers. And his brothers came in and covered their father. Out of respect for him. Not not out of respect for his condition. His condition was blessed but out of respect for who he was. And we as a people, we have that real bad. We forget who people are almost instantaneously when they error or when they fall. Yeah, we forget. We forget God's call on them and even how they may have helped us when they error. That's us as a people. I mean, somebody could have done good work for many years. And one one slip up, and we just, "Uh uh-huh, see, yep, see. I mean, they're they're no good. We stop revering them as a leader. We stop revering them in their God-given capacity. We tear them down to shreds as if their life prior to that meant nothing. Can I keep preaching? Yeah, we get it on our tongue and we start spreading it. And not even thinking about praying for them. Can I keep preaching? Romans tells us, therefore, thou art excusable, O man, whoever thou art that judgeth. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemneth thyself. For thou that judgest, what? Doing the same thing. 
Everything we point our finger at other folks for, we've done something similar. Amen. Amen. So we got to be careful with that. We need, we need prayer or the idea or the thought of help to come up in those situations rather than hurt. Or that's what they get. We should never say that's what they get. Because if it was what we... I, I don't even know how to phrase it. <laughs> but we... We should never say that's what they get because none of us are getting what we deserve to get. Amen. Or oh, you can look the part in here. You can wear the cologne. <laughs> you can smell the part. Amen. But oh, there was a time when you wasn't living up to the part. Amen. And it might have been recent. Oh, but because nobody knows you good. But the person that got found out, no better for them. No, you better change that. Amen. Because we all need the mercy and grace of God. Amen. The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous avails much. This means that if we are truly right, aligned with God, our prayers can do what? Do you believe your prayers can help others? Your prayers can help others. James says it like this. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. So don't just tell folks what, what you doing or did or shouldn't have done. Ask them to pray with you. Amen. And if they're not qualified to pray with you, they don't need to know. You're talking to the wrong person if you can't get a prayer through. Amen. I don't need Jack Leg Jim talking to me. I need somebody that can get a prayer through. So confess your faults. One to another, pray for one another that you may be healed. Amen. The effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. We got to get to that place where we pray with people. Where we ask people for prayer. Or we ask people, do they need prayer? Amen. I was driving down uh, the, one of the streets leading out of my house and I saw this church and they had a sign up stop for prayer and they had some people out there like a little setup where you it's, it almost looked like a car wash where you bring your car into this thing but you basically roll down your window and they'll pray with you and I looked at that I said oh my god that was awesome yeah just a it, it was drive through prayer that's what they called it drive through prayer and man, that touched my heart because who's driving around that needs prayer? And you know what the Lord showed me after I thought about that and I was like, wow, that's amazing. What the Lord showed me is said the, most of the people that's probably pulling in there for prayer are members of other churches. But there's nobody they can go to because everybody talks everybody's business. got to stop randomly with strangers because they don't trust the people in their very fellowship. Yeah. Can I keep preaching? Taking the time to pray for our brothers and sisters is their time in their time of need can bring change to their situation. Taking the time to pray for our brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, whoever it is, children, in their time of need can bring change to their situation. Hebrews 13 and 18, pray for us, for we are sure that we have a clear conscience 
and desire to conduct ourselves rightly in every respect. This is the writer of Hebrews saying, pray for us. Now you write in the Bible, but you still saying, pray for us. Why? Because you believe that prayer changes things. We all need prayer. I got this Echo Prayer app. I actually have this app and you know, I... It, it will bring up people to pray for that you put in there. If somebody said, man, please pray for this or pray for that. Don't just say, I, I, I'm going to pray for you and then forget them. You can type it in there. You can put it in your reminders in your phone, something like that, and let it come up and remind you and then say a prayer for them. Amen. Amen. Because if they told you that, they're dependent on that. <laughs> Especially if you said you would do it. You know what the problem is, J. Bryant? Most folk, they don't believe prayer works. They really don't. They don't believe prayer works because their life is trash. And they prayed and prayed and it's still trash. Well, the prayer is not going to override your bad choices. Amen. And then you can't make a hundred bad choices and then pray two times. Then you can't slap God on stuff. Amen. Some of our situations are so bad it take a little time to work through it. Amen. And then some things ain't going to ever get worked through. That stuff you created, you just have to deal with it, live with it. All right, then I have to cast that care on God because he cares for me. Amen. And you can't let it get you down and get you edgy every time it come up. That's your life. Some stuff you need to get used to being that way. Amen. Amen. You remarried knowing that your ex-wife was an axe murderer. She chasing you every chance she get. That's just going to happen. You can't pray her away. You should have never married her and gave her the money to get that ex. <laughs> she chasing you with it every chance. Oh, there he is. That's just going to be there. Get used to that. Amen. Get used to yeah, go to the gym and get your moves together so you can oh, so you can learn how to <laughs> but y'all know what I'm saying. I know that made that comical but these are decisions we make. We got to make good decisions. Amen. God forgives us for things. We got to go before God. We got to truly repent for things. Amen. But sometimes, amen. Your, your children trifling, they just trifling. They go stay with their daddy, they get trifling. They come with you, they get the word. Well, that's, that's what you have to deal with. And you have to learn how to deal with that. Amen. That's called life. That's life. That's life. Amen. That's life, yeah. Can't get mad. Your job, your boss is a maniac. Treats you like trash. But that's the best job you've had in years. Because you don't have no school. And you decided not to go to any school. So you got to do things a little different. I, I, hey, I know I'm preaching. You don't have no doctor's degree, so you can't go get the doctor's job. Quit applying for that. Quit applying for those jobs. <laughs> In the spirit, I, I, I have a, a PhD and a, you can, <laughs> quit applying for them jobs. <laughs> get the job you can get and you got, amen. It's, 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 it's called life. Amen. And when we say pray for each other and come to each other, that don't mean you come and whine to people. Amen. If your situation is like that, stop whining and spreading it everywhere. Every chance you get, you pulling everybody else down. They can't pray for that situation. That situation going to be like that. It's just the way it is. And it's okay. Pray for strength. God, give me strength to handle this. God, give me strength. Amen. Give me moves. So I don't get chopped <laughs> but
But he said, pray for us, for we are sure that we have a clear conscience. So even the writer of the Bible is asking for prayer. The prayers of others can set you free from strongholds that had you bound and imprisoned. The prayers of others. Look at somebody and say, others' prayers. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes when you bound in a tough enough stronghold, it's hard to pray. No, I guess y'all super... Y'all don't understand that. Y'all super spiritual. Y'all, I'm talking. Yeah, sometimes you can be so, uh, amen. You can be so caught up in it, you can't pray out of it. Oh, some people clapping over. Okay, some. Let me let me go over here and preach because everybody over here they they they're past that. They past those those stages. Amen. Yeah, you need you need somebody else to help you pray. Amen. You look up and you just end this up, man. You need somebody else praying for you. Amen. What's that song? My mama prayed for me. Had me on her mind. Took the time to pray. The next part. I'm so glad she prayed. Remember that? I'm so glad she prayed. Amen. I look at my life now. I know folks was praying for me. Amen. I know my wife prayed for me. I know my mama prayed. I my sister. I know they pray for me. I can feel it. Some of the members, I know y'all. I know you praying for me. Amen. And I need it. Amen. I need it. Amen. I'm going around kicking devil's nests. Just kicking them. Yeah. I know what I do. <laughs> Sometimes I don't want to kick it, Pastor. I want to just keep my foot to myself. Because so, while, while everybody is sleeping, resting on this word, I got to deal with the devil. I got to deal with the witches I woke up. The woke ones now, woke witches. Yeah. So I need folks praying for me. Because I believe the prayers of others can set you free. Amen. 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 I remember back in 2009 when my body had just, I was really, really sick. And I mean, I was real sick. And um, I just, I didn't, I thought that was it. I thought up to part five was all God required of me. And that was it. I had a meeting with my family and everything. I, I, I thought that was it. I hadn't slept in two weeks. You, you ever not slept two weeks? Yeah. The movies, you, you feel like you are in a, a sane asylum. Like you out of your mind without sleep. And I just could not sleep. And I was in the bed one night and my wife and Will and uh, his sisters, all three of them, they were praying for me, praying that I would, you know, whatever this was, or how, you know, that I would make it past this. And I was laying in the bed asleep. I mean, trying to sleep. And I rolled over my back, and I was like, I, I, I just, I guess this is going to be another night. That's how I was looking at it. Like, I guess it's going to be another one, another one to add to the list. I'm not going to be able to sleep. And while I was laying there, I looked up, and I saw pillows of prayer. I saw it. I don't know if it was a vision, I don't know what it was, but I saw pillows of prayer coming down and literally landing on me. And with each one that landed on me, it gave me strength. And it was, and the Lord spoke to me and told me those are, it was them praying. Their prayers I could see coming down and they saved my life. Literally saved my life. And from that day forward, that's when I learned this prayer, this prayer thing, the reason why you can't be consistent, the reason why you have do it, the reason why you never really have time to do it is because it's the most effective thing you have. <laughs> Period. The most effective. The most effective. To handle the devil, to handle the spirit realm, you have to be able to pray. 
Amen. People telling me all the time that they have sleep paralysis and night visitors and spirits and stuff, keeping them up and all this stuff. And I tell, I give them the focus prayer on spiritual uh, wickedness and tell them, play this at night. Every time, and they tell me once they play it at night, it's gone. It's gone. Somebody else praying. You coming in agreement. That's spiritual warfare. Amen. It's not going up to him and that's not spiritual warfare. You better know how to deal in the spirit for spiritual warfare because spirit is in the word. Yep, but the prayers of others can set you free from strongholds that had you bound and in prison. This is a powerful story. Acts 12 and 5, the Bible says, so Peter was kept in prison, but prayer for him was being made fervently by the church to God. Peter, now we know Peter was, you know, an apostle, and he was rough and tough. But the Bible said that he was, the next verse, he was sleeping between two soldiers and had two chains. Not the rapper, two real chains. <laughs> two chains was guarding him. How old is he? <laughs> nah, you had to. <laughs> He's old now, don't get me wrong. He's too old to be rapping, I know that. But he's not this old, no. So on that very night, <laughs> on that very night, Herod was about to bring him forward. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Now, Y'all let me paraphrase this the G. Craig way because this isn't, I don't know if this happened. I'm assuming that because he was bound two chains in between two guards, then he didn't have enough room to lift his hands and hata shata his way out. He was in a position where he could, couldn't move, right? Now, he could pray in his mind, I'm sure, but he couldn't pray out loud. They probably would have cut his head off. So he's down there just so in that moment, he's 100 percent, I believe, dependent on the prayers of others. He needs the prayers of others. You know, like the old folks say, they got him hemmed up. He, he's hemmed up. And they did that on purpose because, you know, they heard if you don't hem them brothers up. You'll look up and them brothers will be out of here. So we heard the story. So we better, we better make sure we hem this brother up good with two chains. Not one chain, two chains. Can I keep preaching in here? So he's, they got him hemmed up in the front of the door. The guards in the front was watching over the prison. So not only did they have him hemmed up in between two, but then they got guards watching him. They're going to make sure. This brother don't get out. But the Bible said because the church prayed and the Bible said prayers were being made fervently by the church to God. So the Bible says, and behold, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared and a light shone in the cell. You know that light. You know what that means. Somebody heard the prayers. And he struck Peter's side and roused him. Get up quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, gird yourself, put your shoes on, man. And he did so. Then he said, get your coat and follow me out of here. We leaving. The prayers reached the throne. The throne dispatched the angels. And the angel got more power than any chains, any gate, any guard. I don't care what position you got him in. You got him between two guards laying down. Them guards never even got up. Holy Spirit. <laughs> crept 
worked in there. Get your coat, get your shoes, get everything. Then the Bible says, and he went out and continued to follow, but he didn't know that what was being done by the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. He thought he was seeing a vision because, okay, they are still laying there, everything. I'm the only thing moving. This got to be a vision. Oh, isn't that awesome, y'all? Man, man, man. He thought he was seeing a vision. And when they had passed the first and second guard, what are these guards doing? Not seeing. The guards wasn't asleep. They just couldn't see. That's bad. Why? That make me want to run around this church. They do anything. They just walked past the first and second guard. Then came to the iron gate that leads into the city and the gate just opened by itself. Uh, I need PJ to get on the organ. I thought, I mean, I, no, 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 don't, 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 don't get on the organ. I'm not, amen, amen. There's some good stuff right here, man. This is some good stuff right here. Boy, y'all be so caught up in these movies, man. Y'all don't realize. You don't realize where they got that junk from. Man, the junk they showing that. No, man, God did all of this first. Y'all watching mutants and X-Men disappear and walking in and, oh, no. God let these this angel and Peter walk right by the guards, pushed the gate open without anybody touching it. Then the Bible says they went out and went along one street and immediately the angel departed from him. The angel's like, I'm done. You free. Go do your thing, Peter. I'll catch you later. I'll catch you later. It's, a, it's like you out. And when the angel left, and Peter came to himself and said, now I know for sure that the Lord has sent forth his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod. But listen, he didn't, even, he didn't just rescue him from the hand of Herod, but he rescued him from all that the Jews were expecting. Rescued him from all the bad opinions. Rescued him from all the folks that wished him dead. Rescued him from all the folks that had something to say. Yeah, they got him. They finally got Peter. I told you. They got, they got No, no, no. God rescued him. And Peter got a testimony, don't he? Hallelujah. Summary. The word was good to me. Listen, your prayers can help your brothers and sisters to be free, just like Peter. They, he was freed from his fate. They didn't just have him in chains because they liked him in there. They had him in chains so they could kill him. But the prayers of the church rescued him, freed him. Your prayers can help your brothers and sisters to be freed from struggles, issues, generational curses, word curses, witchcraft, mind control, strongholds, addictions, vices, mindsets, and anything else that brings bondage. Your prayers. Your prayers. In your prayer time, you must be sure to call out the names of those that the Lord puts on your heart. We get so used to hearing about people getting in trouble or making foolish mistakes without realizing that maybe God has brought them to our attention for our prayers. Yeah, ain't no telling what the Jews were spreading about Peter. And why he was in there. 
And if you had listened to that, you wouldn't have prayed for him. But the Bible said the church prayed for him anyway. I don't care why he's in there. He needs to come out. Because there's a word that he needs to give. Instead of talking about our brothers and sisters, we should be concerned enough to what? Pray for them. Even when they seem to be doing okay. We should pray for sustained grace over them when they come to mind. If the Apostle Paul can ask for prayer, we should not be ashamed to request prayer and never cease to pray for others. Amen. Ephesians 6 and 18 tells us. Paul is teaching the church at Ephesus and he tells them, pray in the spirit and when? 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 You know what that means? Good and bad. <laughs> Good and bad. I mean, don't wait till it get bad to pray. Pray in every situation. Good and bad. No matter what it is. Use how many kinds of prayer? Every kind of prayer and request there is. For the same reason, be alert. Use every kind of effort and make every kind of request for how many? All, All of God's people. Man, we are each other's caretakers. Yeah, we should be looking out and praying for each other. Don't come tell me something bad she did. Did you pray for her? Well, you know, I was coming to you for that. What? No, you was coming to me to talk about him. Did you pray for her? Did you pray for him? Remember when it happened to you? Have you forgot? Sometimes folk need to be reminded. Have you forgot? Yeah. And then he said, this is good right here. Also, pray that God will give me the right words to say. Okay. Okay, this is Paul. This is Paul, the Apostle Paul. And he said, don't forget me when you're praying. You know, that's the hardest thing about being a leader, especially in black hard because people's expectations for you aren't the same that they have for themselves amen and when a leader has a weak moment he can't go to nobody in the black community that's why I got white friends have somebody you call when the devil is riding you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, when you done got weak, when your heart, man, you know you done let God down in some way. Who do you call? Who do you call? Now, I thank God for these elders because I know I can call them. But most pastors tell me, they call me and I'm like, dude, I barely know you. They're like, yeah, but I know you're not going to tell nobody. It's like, wow. You got all those men around you. All those people around you, and you can't get help. Yeah. So Paul was like, look, pray for me. He said, pray that God will give me the right words to say. Then I will speak boldly when I reveal the mystery of the good news. He said, because I've already been doing this as Christ's representatives. He said, I am in prison. So pray that I speak about this good news as boldly as I have to. That's the first thing that happens when, 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 when you get weak, when you get a moment of weakness, whatever, then you want to stop boldly. You want to stop what's making the devil mad at you. Look at everybody. They're looking at me like I'm just, uh, you, 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 hey, I don't care. You don't have to live this life I live. But yeah, so you start, you know, 
God speak to you and say, hey, I want you to say this and say that. And you'd be like, and there's absolutely nobody else that can say that. <laughs> yeah, it gets tough sometimes. But ultimately, I'm going to do what God says. Ultimately, you're you going to do what God says. We know that. But man, I need prayer. Amen. And if Paul need prayer, we all need prayer. So don't hesitate to ask for prayer. Amen. Amen. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for a message this important that we would learn in spite of what the world is doing and in spite of what carnal believers are doing, we will learn in this hour the importance of prayer. This is what has been missing and this is what has been neglected. But Father, our prayer lives will be challenged like never before in the coming end times. So help us learn to pray for ourselves. And help us to learn, God, to pray for others. Help us to consider what we're saying when we're talking about others. Help us to consider that person. Truly consider what they're dealing with, who they are, how this affects them, their family, how it affects you, the body. Help us, Father God, to truly be concerned about each other so that we can be a house of prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen.